Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about the growth of cities. And when I'm talking about growth, uh, what I'm referring to is the population. The population in cities during the Industrial Revolution began to really grow. Uh, in particular in the northeast part of the United States, uh, states like Illinois, New York, uh, Massachusetts. And if you look at this picture, it's a good example. A lot of cities back then were uh, just completely filled. There was lots and lots of people. And the reason why so many people are moving is, remember, there's the economy in the United States is doing very, very well. And a lot of immigrants are moving into the United States. Uh, people from the South that were very poor in the Southern United States, they're moving. And also the South still had a lot of racism, so a lot of African Americans were moving to the Northeastern part of the United States. And as the nation's industrial growth continued, cities such as Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and New York grew rapidly as manufacturing and transportation centers. So uh, these are places where trains would go to. These are places where boats would go to. Uh, so a lot of people wanted to live here, and this is where all the manufacturing was. If you're going to start a company or a business, uh, you want to start it somewhere where there's transportation. Uh, during this time, you know, there's starting to be airplanes. There's a few, but airplanes don't really carry that much stuff. If you want to ship stuff, uh, you need trains and you need boats. And all of these cities have access to trains and boats. Uh, if you are somewhere where there's no trains or boats, uh, you're not going to start a company there because it's going to be hard to ship it. So there's not much... Uh, so there wouldn't be much manufacturing in places where there's no transportation, but Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, New York, uh, they grew a lot. And factories in large cities provided jobs, but workers' families often lived in harsh conditions, crowded in tenements and slums. So tenements and slums, you just have to know, are, uh, they're very bad houses. They're not even houses, they're like apartments. Uh, this is what they were. Uh, a lot of people would just live in one room. Uh, there was usually just one bathroom uh, for multiple for multiple rooms. Uh, so there might be one hallway and 10 different apartments, but there'd only be one bathroom. And it wasn't very clean. And you can see people are just stacked up. Uh, they're not very good houses. They don't really have heating. But these people don't have a lot of money. Remember, they're not getting paid very well at all. So this is all they can afford, and everybody works. The kids work, uh, the parents work, and this is what they can afford. Uh, but these are tenements and slums, and they're living here because it's just very expensive. And the rapid growth of cities caused housing shortages, which that just means there was not enough houses. And there was also a need for new public services, such as sewage, and water systems and public transportation, which is buses and trains. And when we say sewage, uh, that's things like toilets, drains. Uh, it's places where like when you turn on the faucet, the water has to go somewhere. So they needed sewage uh, and also public transportation like buses. And a lot of that stuff starts to come around during this time because they needed it. So many people were in the city, they needed transportation. And cities in the Northeast, such as Boston and New York, constructed subway systems around the turn of the 20th century. And many cities built trolleys or streetcar lines. And really we have to know about trolleys and streetcars. Uh, they look like this. Uh, they're actually run off of electricity. And kind of hard to see, but there's some wires up here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger for a sec. Uh, but see these wires? The wires would go all over the city, and you'd pay money, and you'd sit down, and it's very similar to a train, and it would just take you to where you need to go. Uh, so some places like San Francisco and in in California, they still have them, but uh, there's not very many trolleys anymore. There's buses now, but those cities were starting to have trolleys and streetcars. And as the cities grew, uh, what they had to start doing is they needed to build skyscrapers because there wasn't anywhere else to build houses so they had to make the buildings higher and higher and higher and higher to accommodate more people so these are skyscrapers right here 
uh, but they also needed elevated railroads. So right here, notice this railway is elevated. People can walk under it, people can drive under it. It doesn't block anybody because it's above. So that's an elevated railroad and those are good for cities. And then there's what Washington DC has right here, which is subways. And a subway is just a train that's underground. So above ground, people can still walk, you can still have cars, and it doesn't stop anybody. And so the DC Metro, that is a subway, just underground. All right. <clears throat> and next we're gonna keep going in industrialization, and that's excess which is extra of the gilded age so gilded age it just really means people had a lot of money during this time uh, but well some people had a lot of money and the big thing was income disparity and disparity means not equal uh, during this time people were either very rich or very poor few people were in between um, so that would be like right now, teachers, they're kind of people that would be in between. Um, the United States today, we have a lot of people that are in between. We're not rich, we're not poor, we're kind of in the middle. But back then, you were either very rich or you were very poor, which isn't good. And the people who are rich had lavish lifestyles. So if you think of like the Kardashians, uh, people like that, that would be lavish. They're rich people, spent a lot of money. They had a lot of stuff they didn't need and just spent tons of money. And there was ruthless business practices of capitalists and forming monopolies and trusts. So I'm going to go over what monopolies and trusts are right now. And so a monopoly, this is when customers can only buy a product from one company. And a company can charge as much as they want because customers don't have a choice. So the United States, we do not have monopolies anymore. Uh, sometimes they come up but we really do not have monopolies like think of your phone okay there's multiple companies that you can buy a phone from you can buy an iPhone you can buy a Samsung you can buy a Windows phone you can buy a Nokia phone so there's lots of phones where you can buy and companies will try to make low prices so you buy their phone but during this time they would have a monopoly and that would mean there's only one company that you can buy a phone from. So imagine the only phone company is, we'll say, um, Apple, like the Apple iPhone. And that's the only place that you can buy phones from. What if they charge $2,000 for a phone? Can you buy a cheaper phone? No, because they have a monopoly, but we don't have that. But back then, there was lots of monopolies, like with uh, steel. People can charge a lot of money for steel. You didn't have a choice. Um, so that's a monopoly. It's just where customers can only buy a product from one company. And a trust is very similar, but a trust is when several companies in the same industry get together. This can be bad because they can raise prices and force people to pay a lot of money to buy products. So that would be like uh, Samsung and Windows and Nokia and Apple all getting together and saying, you know what? let's charge $5,000 for cell phones. And people wouldn't be able to afford it, but you wouldn't have a choice because all the phone companies would get together and they would say, we're gonna sell phones for $5,000 now. And everyone pretty much needs a phone, so you would be out of luck. But today, trusts, those are illegal. Companies can't get together anymore and charge tons of money uh, and force people to buy stuff. Uh, it's good for people to have options and prices to be low. That's why we don't have trust. But back then, there was lots of uh, trust. Uh, the industrialization of the United States also had an impact on working conditions, and they weren't very good. Uh, people worked long hours. Uh, people often worked 16 hours a day, and they had low wages, and especially for women and children. Women and children... Uh, got paid much, much less than men did. It didn't matter if they were immigrant, immigrant men, uh, women and children, always got paid very little. And there was no job security and no benefits such as working men's compensation. Uh, like today, if you're working 
Right, say I'm a teacher and I'm walking down the hallway and I slip and break my leg. Uh, I would get a lot of time off. I would still get money. Uh, they would give me money because I got hurt on the job. And then when I came back, I would still have my job. Uh, but back then, that didn't happen. If you worked in a factory and your arm got stuck in a machine and you lost your arm, well, you get fired because you couldn't work anymore and you wouldn't get any money. You wouldn't get anything. Uh, there was no protection for workers. And if you got the flu and missed a week of work, they might fire you. Uh, they don't care if you're sick. Uh, things were very, very uh, bad back then for workers. And there was also dangerous working conditions. People were not allowed to take restroom breaks and doors were often locked so workers could not leave. Uh, they were very strict. Maybe you had a lunch and that was it. You couldn't just say, oh, I want a break, I want to use the restroom. Nope, you had to continue working. And machines were very dangerous and there was also no air conditioning. It got very, very hot and there was lots of chemicals or lots of chemicals were dangerous and workers got lung disease. And uh, yeah, machines, lots of times people lost arms, they lost legs, they were killed from machines. There's also something called company towns. So sometimes a company would be away from the city and they would start their own city, which sounds good, but the company would only have one store in the city and they would charge a lot of money. So maybe they would charge $10 for bread, they would charge $20 for hot dogs, they would charge $20 for Gatorade. And the workers didn't like it, but there was only one store in the city. In the company towns, that's why they did that. So they'd give you money for your paycheck, but then all the money from your paycheck would go to the store. And there was no option. You couldn't go anywhere else because that town only had one, one store. And going, we're still talking about working conditions. This is what we talked about in our uh, the first part, and that is... Uh, Sometimes fires broke out in factories and workers would be stuck. The worst fire disaster was the Triangle Shirtwaist Company fire in New York City. And a fire broke out and several workers were stuck because the doors were locked. 146 people died in the fire. And the Triangle Shirtwaist Company fire in 1911 led to better working conditions in factories. So as you guys read, after that uh, fire and when all the people died, they decided, you know what, um, a lot of people rallied. They said, we need to get much safer working conditions. And these are some examples. Uh, here's the hoses. They're trying to put out the fire. Uh, people were trying to get down, but there was, because the only way you can get down was through the window and the fire escape, but it actually broke. Uh, the fire extinguisher didn't work, and the doors were locked, so people couldn't get out. And some of the women, uh, which they were teenage girls, most of them, 13, 14, 15 years old because they could not get out of the building and they didn't want to burn to death. They literally jumped out of the building and died when they hit the floor. It was uh, very tragic. And because the working conditions were so bad, there started to be a formation of labor unions and the labor movement. And a union is a group of workers with common goals. Like there's a teacher's union. Uh, so... All the teachers, uh, we, they can kind of get together and say, you know what, we want better conditions, we want more money, or we need more days off. Uh, so the goals of the labor movement, they wanted higher wages, so more money. Uh, they wanted to work less, and they wanted safer conditions. And there were several labor organizations. Uh, there was the American Federation of Labor, which was led by Samuel Gompers. And this consisted of people at the craft, like carpenters, steelmakers. Uh, there was the Knights of Labor by Terence Powderly. And this consisted of skilled and unskilled workers. Uh, there was the American Railway Union, led by Eugene V. Devs. That was for railway workers. Then the International Ladies Garment Workers Union. And this was for women who worked in clothing factories. <clears throat> but really, it was just for women in general. Women did not get paid as much as men. So even men did not get paid very well, uh, but women got even less. If a man got $10 a day, a woman probably got like $3 per day. They didn't get paid much. And labor unions as well. Um, you guys remember when we learned about immigrants, there was a lot of discrimination against them. 
and labor unions were part of that. Many labor unions opposed immigrants and immigration because they felt immigrants would work for low wages. So some of these unions, maybe they're making $10 a day. Uh, they wanted to get more money, but then they, they felt that some immigrants would come in and work for $9 a day, and then they would lose their jobs. They thought they couldn't get more money because immigrants would work for lower, lower money than they would. And there's something called collective bargaining. And this is when labor unions would meet with employers, uh, which employers are factory owners, and discuss working conditions and pay. And collective bargaining was a technique used to win more rights for workers. So like, like I said, there's teachers unions. Uh, so the teachers union will meet with Fairfax County and they're gonna talk about Teachers, you know, should they get more money? Should we have more days off? Should we have, uh, should we hire more teachers so there's less students in the class? They try to do things, uh, the teachers unions, to help out teachers. And that's just an example. They have unions for lots of things. And there's something called strikes, and that's when workers stopped working. So let's say the teachers union, let's say teachers aren't happy with our pay. Uh, we can say, you know what? We're not gonna work anymore until we get paid more money. Uh, Virginia doesn't really have that happen, but other states, that does happen. Sometimes teachers will stop working and go on strike until they get paid more. And that started in the United States during this time. Uh, there was the Haymarket Square Riot, which led to the end of the Knights of Labor. Uh, there was the Homestead Strike by Carnegie Steelworkers. And there was the Pullman Strike by railroad workers. These are all times when workers said, you know what, we're not going to work anymore because we're not getting paid very well, so they went on strike. And the gains of the labor movement were, they were important because all these people striked and there was all these things going on. People started to get better wages. People started to work less hours. Like today, people only work eight hours. Back then, it was 12 to 16. And there was regulated which means safe working conditions. Regulated means there's laws. So if you do construction, you have to wear a helmet. Uh, you need to have breaks. You need, you get restroom breaks, things like that. So these were the gains of the labor movement. And many workers wanted eight hour working days so they had time to rest at home and also have free time. And that's what they got people eventually, but it took a long time, took a lot of, took a lot of, fighting, took a lot of strikes because things used to be very bad, but thankfully a lot of people uh, striked and a lot of people fought to get better wages and better conditions. Right. If you have any questions, let me know.